In this video, I'll be introducing group theory, but before I get into actual groups, I'm going to do a very specific example using triangles. Okay, so I'm going to have a triangle, a triangle that's labeled A, B, C on its vertices. <clears throat> okay, so now, right here's the triangle if you can imagine it. All right, there's the triangle. And there's a couple things I can do to this triangle, right? I can rotate it like that. So I can rotate it like that. And that gives me the triangle C, A, B, right? Another thing I can do with this triangle is rotate it in the opposite direction. So from that to that. Okay, so... That's going to be the triangle uh, B, A, C. Okay? Now there's a couple other things I can do to this triangle. So I can flip it along that axis. Okay, so that gives me this triangle, right? So if I have this triangle right here. And I flip it like that. Okay. I could also do this triangle. Except I flip it along that axis. Alright, so this is the triangle. What I do is I flip it like that. that. And that gives us the triangle where A is fixed, B and C switch. And then there's one more. It's that triangle. Alright. Where I flip it like that. So like that. And this. Okay. So that fixes B, and it switches A and C. Okay, so this is called the dihedral, dihedral group of order 6. Okay? Why is it called the dihedral group? <clears throat> well, it's di because there's two different symmetries here. Rotations, right? Rotations, and then reflections, or flips. Let's name each of these. I'll call this rotation in that direction. I'll call that rotation in that direction. I'll call this the, the flip, or the, the flip in the... C axis, the flip in the A axis, and the flip in the B axis. Now, a very important property in group theory is something called an isomorphism. This group is going to be isomorphic to this group. The group of all permutations on three letters. What does that mean? Well, it means that their operations are the same. So let me first explain what I mean by this. Okay? So, in this example, you can see that A goes to B. A moves to B's position. B goes to C's position. C goes to A's position. In this one, A goes to C's position. B goes to... A's position and C goes to B's position, right? In this example, C's fixed, A and B are switched. In this example, A is fixed, B and C switch. And in this example, B's fixed, A and C switch. So how is this isomorphic to this? Because they do the same things, okay? But before I go more into that, I'm going to go a bit more formal in group terms. Go a little bit more 
in depth into this. Okay, so there's a couple properties that we have of this. The first property is that there's an identity. There exists E, an element of our group, I'll call it G, such that for every G, right, for every other element in our group, E times G is equal to G times E is equal to G. It fixes, it fixes it. So if I had my triangle, the identity is do nothing. Do nothing. Just keep it there. So if I were to do a rotation, then do nothing. Uh, nothing, nothing of interest would happen, right? So if I flipped it like that and then did nothing, well, that's not very interesting at all. So our second requirement is that there are inverses. So for every G in the group, there exists a G inverse, an element of the group, such that G times G inverse is equal to E, the identity. So, for example, if I were to do that rotation on the triangle, right, just do the opposite rotation. If I were to do the flip like that on the triangle, if I just flip it back, it's its own identity, right? If I were to do that rotation, it'd be that rotation back. That gets you back to the original triangle. It gets you to the identity where you, it's the same as doing nothing. If I were to rotate there and then rotate back, that's done nothing. So it's equal to the identity. And if I were to flip it like that and then flip it like that again, it's done nothing. You're in the same position you were before. Okay. And we have a Another third condition, and it's a little, little more convoluted, but what it says is that if I pick any three elements, right, A, B, and C, and if I did A, then I did B, and I took the output of that and did C, that's the same thing as if I did B and C, and then I went ahead and did A with it on the left. So... On our triangle example, if I were to rotate it, then flip it, then rotate it back, right? That's the same thing as if I rotated it, then flipped it, then rotated it back, right? So that's what that's saying. That, that might seem a little obvious, but it's not. So what does this multiplication mean? In the example of a triangle, it means doing compounding two different, composing two different uh, symmetries, I guess you'd say. And in this uh, isomorphic, isomorphic group, if I were to have some permutation and then some other permutation, like that, maybe, right? It'd just be composing them again, right? So A to B, B to B, A to B, B to A, A to C, B to C, C to A, right? That's what you get out of this, right? And you can check that if I then took the output of that and applied a different operation to it, that's going to be the same as if I did that right there, that operation right there. Wait, let me do this. Okay. So what I have right here is our first permutation right here. And then I'm going to do a third permutation right there. These are called permutations. Okay. So if I just follow where A goes, A goes to B and B goes to B, which goes to C. So in total, I get A goes to C. Okay, B goes to A, A goes to C, C goes to A, A goes to A. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, B goes to A. B goes to A. Okay, and C goes to C, which goes to A, which goes to B, C goes to B. Okay, so what if instead of doing that, I just took this right here, and then looked at the permutation on the left right there, right? 
So what do I get out of this? I get A, B, C, A, B, C, A goes to C, which goes to A, A is fixed, B goes to B, which goes to C, and C goes to B, okay? Then, what does it mean to have this permutation on the left? Well, it means I, I substitute this permutation in right there. So I substitute, oh, dang it, I messed up. A, B, C, A, B, C, I'm pretty sure we had it like that. Okay, and then I put this in place, right? And then I did this. I calculated this. What will this give us? Well, A goes to B. B goes to, so A goes to B, which goes to C. A goes to C. B goes to A, which goes to A. B goes to A. C goes to C, which goes to B. C goes to B. We got the same thing out as if we did it the normal way. That's what associativity is. And so, if it were... If we have a group, a set G, and a multiplication, a binary operation, right? It takes in two elements of G and outputs another element, and it has all of these properties. We say G, under this multiplication, is a group. And we're done.